Are you ready? Are you ready for the news time? Yes, my name is Phil Chambers and I am joined this week by Gareth. He's actually fain to be here. Thanks for joining us, Gareth. I bothered to turn up today. <laughs> he did. Uh, but before we get into it, make sure to like the video, comment below what you think of all of today's stories and subscribe. Click the button down below. And if you want to skip to any of today's stories, the links are in the description below. So click the little timestamps and away you go. But what have we got up first, Gareth? Well, uh, SmackDown was an eventful show. It was actually quite quite a different watch because uh, as we normally talk about this, uh, SmackDown's become quite... Focus on the good wrestling, don't focus on the weird stories. That, that That's the way yeah. to sum it up recently. But mm, There's a lot of weird stories. There's a lot of weird <laughs> stories. But I felt like it flipped a little bit this week. Um, but I'll just let you know what went down. Um, AJ Styles obviously had his Intercontinental Championship match against Grand Metalik, and he, he won that. He retained, so he's still the champion. And he started beating him up afterwards because he's just a nasty pasty. And um, then Big E had his first singles match of this new singles run that he's on now. And he beat The Miz. And that was, he overcame the, the interference from, uh, I nearly called him Johnny Nitro. That's it's a different time. <laughs> Definitely not that. Uh, yeah, so he overcame that, which is quite cool. And then he, he introduced like what looked like a Brock lock. It was really cool. He did his new submission and like nearly twisted his knee up. It was great. I loved it. Um, and then Naomi defeated Lacey Evans with, with a little roll-up, which is SmackDown, got to have a few roll-ups in there. Uh, and then Big. Sonya Deville absolutely destroyed Mandy Rose. It was uncomfortable to watch. And another yep. lot of lipstick, though. There's a lot They're of... liking the makeup things at the moment. Yeah. I think they saw that visual last week and was like, that looks really good. Let's just do it again. Yeah, it's lipstick and feet. It's, there's a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of barefoot and a lot of lipstick going on in SmackDown. It's, it's... Suddenly, SmackDown's turned into a Tarantino movie. A lip, you know what? I'm here <laughs> for it. I, mean, I, am, I am here for it. And then we had the uh, SmackDown Women's Championship match and Bayley defended, successfully defended her title against Nikki Cross in what was a pretty decent match. Quite enjoyed it. I'd probably rank it a tiny little bit higher than the Extreme Rules match for me, just personally, because there's just more stakes, everything had progressed a little bit more, quite enjoyed it. And then the real yep. story, the thing everyone wants to talk about, after this match, it looked like we were going to get that nice little heel turn split that we've been, well, has been teased for weeks and weeks and weeks. But no, we got swerved. The Fiend popped up, everything went red, and bleep, 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 like screw oh, it was just brilliant, that happened. And then, it was odd. It looked like he was doing that thing. So like you're, gonna, you're trying to feed a, a little baby with a, a spoon. You did the aeroplane thing. He did that, but with his <laughs> like glove. It was it was a bit here surreal. Here comes the mandible claw. Yeah, it's a gummy too. And like Alexa just didn't really react. She was just like, oh no, oh no. I've seen what happens now. And then yeah, he, he full on mandible clawed her, and everyone booed. So quite good because he's been he's been a character really the theme where people have. Even when it's, he's been quite evil and done dastardly things, everyone's cheering because they've just been really, really cool. Whereas when you do yeah. this, you can't really cheer him anymore. That's, it's quite bad. Yeah, this is kind of the first proper heel move, I guess. I, I like this sort of Alexa Bliss, Nikki Cross stuff as well, because we've been, I think everyone's kind of been expecting Alexa Bliss to turn on Nikki Cross at some point, because that's just what she does. It's Nikki Cross, uh, Alexa Bliss even. Um, she she doesn't have proper friends. She just uses people. But no, she's actually got a friend this time, and it looks like it might be the uh, tables on the on the tables have turned on her. Yeah. Poor Alexa Bliss. Um, and then she just gets attacked by the fiend. <laughs> Obviously, building towards something more with Braun Strowman at SummerSlam. Wait and see what happens next week. I guess. Yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued. It's, it's it's definitely left us wanting to watch next week, which is good. You should do that more. Indeed, that's the point. <laughs> Um, anyway, moving on from that, uh, Rusev, uh, we should be calling him Miro now, I mm. guess. Um, obviously, it was announced earlier that he's kind of retired from wrestling and he's going to be a full-time Twitch streamer. Well, turns out he's got himself banned already. <laughs> really good Way to go. This. Yeah, that's, that's um, good. We're not entirely sure what the reasoning is, but it's definitely believed to be Lana in a bikini because Twitch is a bit sensitive about sexy things, let's say. Um, but Rusev, uh, Miro, sorry, put out a tweet just saying, I was too sexy for Twitch. I learned my lesson. See you all tomorrow. Um, but yeah, Twitch do this all the time. People get banned quite a lot on that platform. Um, it's only a 24 hour thing. He'll be back and I guess he'll learn his lesson and um, stop 
yeah, stop having Lana in a bikini on his Twitch streams. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the no sexy ruling ban thing on YouTube because I think we'd every single day we just we just get. I know, right? We just constantly wouldn't have, wouldn't have a job, would we? Just the way it is. But thankfully, <laughs> the job there isn't the really. Things. Right, um, so I don't know how to segue from sexy Rusev Lana into this one. Um, Lana was on Raw for a little bit. She still is on Raw. Uh, Paul Heyman used to run Raw. Paul Heyman! So there's been a, an update, really, on his That was approach. really good step. Thank I'm, you. I'm, I'm proud trying. of you, by I, just, the way. I literally saw them in front of me and just glided along them. It was great. Um, he's So apparently, like his approach to booking WWE Raw has now been revealed and it, it was in a Fightful Select report. And to be honest, it's it's something that has been ham well, it's been hammered home by WWE every now and again, but then they just seem to forget about it. Whereas it seems like Paul Heyman was really trying to push this to the forefront. I'll explain. He he was really for the rivalry between Raw and SmackDown. And he, he it, it felt very much like when he was in charge of SmackDown all those years ago, where he was saying, right, we need to be the superior brand. Let's let's just try and shunt SmackDown completely out of the spotlight right now because they've got this big Fox deal and we'll just make it all about Raw and just focus on us and we'll be the better show. And just having this brand rivalry that doesn't just happen at Survivor Series. Um, so he also said in this report that he was keen uh, to shine the spotlight on specific underutilized talents, people like Angel Garza, Apollo Crews, Austin Theory, and um, he really, really campaigned to bring Buddy Murphy over to Raw to put him into the spotlight as well, which he's still still there now. He's still in a good spot now. Apollo Crews obviously was the United States champion. Um, Angel Garza now has is, is been a prominent part of Raw for so long. Uh, Austin Theory's gone missing recently, which I'm not too sure. I don't know if that's injury related or not. Um, but I think it's, it's very interesting that he had this eye on the future um, in terms of like building new talent and everything else. And that's something that Vince McMahon has now come out again and said, oh, we need to build stars for the future. It was like, you already had that in place with Paul Heyman, but now you're just claiming it's your own idea. Very odd. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm all for this, the idea of really putting these brands against each other and just having that rivalry there all year, just taking little shots at each other whilst you're in commentary and everything else, not going, oh, here's what's happening on Raw this week while we're watching SmackDown. It just doesn't feel right. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's worked before as well with the mm. sort of original brand split when Heyman took SmackDown and he had like the SmackDown 5 and he just yeah. made SmackDown absolutely brilliant, like must watch TV, when before he took control it was just sort of reruns of Raw for a very long time. Yeah. Um, so like, yeah, this works and pushing new guys, he's, like it's a proven thing that's been shown to work and up your ratings and get, like it, it got SmackDown to a really prominent position to where it was properly competing with Raw. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it works. Why not do it again? Instead, I guess we're going to get Randy Orton as champion because that's pushing new stars. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to book past that. I'm trying to, because that feels like it's an inevitable thing that's going to happen. I'm just trying to see yeah. far enough into the future to think, right, where's that going to make sense down the line? Where's where's it? Where's the payoff going to be in that? And I don't know. I've not got a lot of faith, but we'll see what happens. Indeed. Um, moving on. So speaking of pushing new stars and who they never pushed in WWE, Matt Cardona, you may know him as Zack Ryder, obviously debuted on AEW Dynamite this week. Um, a little bit of an update about his AEW contract. Uh, Wrestling Inc. are reporting uh, that he's based on a five appearance deal at the minute. Um, obviously, one of those appearances was the debut this week. Next week, he is teaming with to uh, Cody to face the Dark Orders, Alex Reynolds and John Silver. Uh, so that's two down. He's also apparently releasing an AEW t-shirt already, uh, which you can see here. I'll show you. Um, so. Even though it's just a five appearance deal, this is something that they've been doing with a lot of the new talent that they've been bringing in, putting them on a bit of a trial basis, five appearances, see how they do, and then review after that, um, which seems like a really sort of wise move. It mm. gives them enough time to show what they can do, enough time to sort of get over with the audience, um, and then, yeah, just reassess after five after five appearances yeah i really um, so like I, that because it, it's it's not it's not an idea of oh once you get signed i've made it to the promised land relax you can't do that if you're only signed to five appearances it's like i've got to make these count and yeah it's yeah five appearances prove yourself and then we'll figure it out from here yeah. um so whether they're just putting him on the same deal to show sort of solidarity throughout the ranks mm. not just because he's cody's best bud 
Uh, but I fully expect him to sign after this. Like, yeah. I mean, let's face it, uh, the buzz from his debut this week was massive. Obviously, he's got a t-shirt out already. Uh, it seems mad that they wouldn't sign him. Imagine if they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Just no way. Right, we've got a t-shirt, make loads of money. See you later, buddy. What, what, what? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be insane. Um, yeah, what's next? Um, have, have, have we spoke about Eddie Kingston? Oh, Mr. yeah. Mr. Mr. Kingston. How could we miss out Mr. Right Kingston? Now. <laughs> How could I? Speaking of AEW, um, they announced last uh, yesterday that they have signed Eddie Kingston. Um, so yeah, obviously massive debut a couple of, a couple of weeks ago, um, and then the whole hashtag sign Eddie Kingston thing went around, and they they listened and they've signed him, and yeah, that's it. Eddie yeah. Kingston is officially in AEW. It's good. It's good when people like. Like we were talking about there, people come in and have these five appearances and really make a name for himself. He didn't even need to do that. He literally just yeah. <laughs> popped up, they had one appearance, really made it count. Promos before and after were outstanding. The match itself was just oh, brilliant, hard hitting, yeah. great stuff. Everything that he can bring to the table. So yeah, good stuff all around. Good for Eddie Kingston. Hopefully he, he just keeps pushing on from here. Um, yeah, but uh, this again, you've given me a very tough one to, to go. Uh, all right, let's talk extreme. <laughs> Matches. Okay, so you've got Eddie Kingston taking out Cody Rhodes in a real like, hard hitting no DQ match. Then you got yep. Seth Rollins, Rem Stereo, and an eye for an eye match. Same, same thing? <laughs> same thing? Yeah. Same, yeah, exactly. that'll do. Same thing. Um, so yeah, he was speaking to uh, Talk Sports Alex McCarthy, uh, talking about all things WWE, talking about. Um, Specifically talking about the eye for an eye match and the concept, and he said when he first heard about it, he thought it was ridiculous and a bit of a joke. So he's not the only one. Most <laughs> most of us felt that way. Um, he said, "Well, a really odd thing that that came out and jumped out to me when I was reading through this was Vince McMahon obviously thought up the idea and said, right, eye for an eye match, go on, see what see what you can do with this.'" And Seth thought, "All right, this sounds like a bit of a challenge. It sounds ridiculous, but a ridiculous challenge it is." Um, but yeah. when it came to the actual planning of the match itself and like executing the match, McMahon didn't really have a lot to do with it. It was, well, according to Rollins, it was him, Mysterio and Jamie, no Jamie Noble for 99.9% .9 of it was pretty much, they were responsible for that much of the match. Um, they also filmed multiple endings to the match uh, with a prosthetic eye and everything else. And I think McMahon just wasn't very happy with a few of those. That's why we ended up with the weird. <laughs> Salty wasn't Quite happy done. either. Tell him no. Salty. Hi. That, that's literally like watching me watching the eye for an eye match. That's That, that was my reaction. Like, <laughs> Great. He has very strong thoughts on this match. He does. We all do. We all do. Um, yeah, so, and then he also mentioned that he, he was aghast uh, when he first heard about it. But they said they'd make it work, uh, the actual eye for an eye match. Uh, but in the end, they were all pretty proud of how things turned out. So, good for them. Yeah, I think they did the best with a bad situation, really. Um, like the match itself, it was, it was fine. It was better than it probably had any right to be. Finish, maybe not so much. But they did what they could, let's say. They did. I, I just can't get over the just seeing the full fake eye with the little red on it, and it was just yeah. Ugh. No. I think even worse than that was just the excuse they made on board. It's like, oh, it's fine. It's still attached to the optic nerve. We can just pop it back in and it'll be fine. Uh, I can't wait for the re-emergence of Rey Mysterio now. It's going to be great. <laughs> the glass eye or something. Yeah. Um, anyway, just to finish off, uh, WWE attempting to hype Raw. I've got a little bit of a statement about two segments that are going to be on Raw. And I'm going to let you decide if this makes you excited to see it. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, so first one. Will Asuka be out for retribution on Sasha Banks and Bailey? Last Monday, Bailey's vicious attack on Asuka's friend and tag team partner Kyrie Sane allowed Sasha Banks to capture the Raw Women's Championship, but not at long after. Asuka's agony turned into pure rage. How will Bailey and the boss's reign of dominance across brands continue? Will Asuka be out for payback after the career ending attack on her best friend? Find out this Monday on Raw. Yes, she will. Send. Super excited to see it. <laughs> I'm, I'm so here for it. Career ending injury, by the way. Yeah. Well then. Uh, next. <laughs> How will Drew McIntyre respond to Randy Orton's attack? Drew McIntyre never saw it coming. Randy Orton made it clear that he's coming for McIntyre's WWE Championship last Monday on Raw, and the Viper struck first. 
dropping the champion with a thunderous RKO after McIntyre's grueling win over Dolph Ziggler in an Extreme Rules match. How will the fearless WWE Champion react to Orton's ruthless attack out of nowhere? Find out on Raw. So is this literally both people turning up and going, ugh, didn't like what happened last week? Yeah. Yeah, is, I mean, is, let's watch this it. <laughs> This is WWE's big pitch to sell Raw to the, to the masses. I don't think it works. Who writes these press release things? They're really bad. That was copy and paste. They, they yeah. the does anyone, does this get anyone excited to see wrestling on Raw? Like, really? I think they're better off just putting the images up. Just just put up the red Raw <laughs> thing and then just put the people on that are going to be there. You don't need to know what they're going to do because if you find out what they're going to do, you won't watch. So just, yeah. just show who's going to be there. Be like, oh, then then you can your imagination can run free. Oh, I could have Drew McIntyre fighting off against, I don't know, who else, Bobby Lashley or something. Wow, that'd be incredible. But no, he's just going to come out and go, oh, Randy, didn't like that, what you did. So I'm going <laughs> to kick you in the face in a couple of weeks. Yeah. That's yeah, that's that. Be excited for Raw. I guess. Yeah, we're telling anyway, you. Anyway, that was the Saturday news. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Um, go subscribe to Kayfabe News on YouTube uh, for all your wonderful satirical wrestling news content. Uh, and also go follow me on Twitter. You can follow me at FillMyChambers and you can go follow Gareth at GMorgan04. And you can follow everyone at WhatCultureWWE. Comment below what you think of all of today's stories and especially if you're excited about Raw after that great description. Um, and yeah, subscribe to the channel, like the video, uh, but most importantly, have yourselves a bloody good day. Bye. See you later. <laughs>